A group of national medical associations and doctors have filed a lawsuit against the Food and Drug Administration, claiming that for political reasons, the government agency illegally approved chemical abortion drugs that actually harm girls and women. According to the lawsuit, the FDA ignored its legal obligation to safeguard the health, safety, and welfare of girls and women when they approved these drugs. Joining me now to discuss this is Julie Marie Blake, Senior Counsel at Alliance Defending Freedom, which is representing the consortium behind the lawsuit. Julie, welcome back to Washington Watch. Thanks so much for having me. Now, start off by telling us why your clients believe the FDA approved chemical abortion drugs for political reasons rather than medical ones. Well, we represent uh, OBs, emergency room doctors, medical associations, the doctors who every day care for women mm -hmm. and see the harms of these dangerous chemical abortion drugs in their practice. So the FDA first approved these drugs as Bill Clinton was leaving office. And the FDA never followed the law when it uh, approved these drugs in the first place. Uh, for example, uh, federal statutes passed by Congress say, before you can approve a new drug and allow it to be given to teenagers, to uh, girls who are still going through puberty, you have to at least have a study of it on a pediatric population to make sure it doesn't affect them as going through puberty differently uh, from anyone else. And the FDA never did that before approving chemical abortion drugs, uh, which are usually used in the first trimester um, up to uh, 10 weeks pregnancy uh, on teenage girls. Um, they also said that pregnancy is an illness um, because you can't approve FDA drugs or something uh, that isn't an illness, but pregnancy is an illness. It's a normal, natural part of life. And of course, any abortion drug always takes an innocent human life. Now, those are some interesting points, and I'll unpack a couple of these with you. This goes back to the Clinton administration, you say. Why has it taken this long for this lawsuit to be brought if the, if the obligation to do these studies uh, was triggered in the 90s and that still hasn't happened? You know, that is because the FDA has a very problematic requirement that says, if we make a bad decision, you can't just go to court and say, hey, you're, what you're doing is against the law. You have to go to the agency and ask the agency to change your mind. And so our clients, um, the medical associations, these doctors went to the FDA back then and said, hey, you don't have the science here. You, you put politics in front of science and hurt women and girls. Um, and what the FDA did was stonewall us. They sat on our petition for 14 years. And then the same day they finally got around to denying the petition, they then changed the rules and removed the safeguards on these drugs that would have prevented them from harming women and girls even more and said, now you can have it with a, you know even fewer protections. So we went back, we filed a new citizen petition. And then um, just this year, the Biden administration uh, again, denied our petition. So we finally are done with the stonewalling from the agency. We finally can go to court. And we're confident that once we get our claims in front of a judge, that he'll say, hey, you didn't follow the law. You didn't follow the science. Uh, and it's time to withdraw these drugs from the marketplace. Now, Julie, what are some of the dangers to girls and women from these drugs that you say uh, were approved without following the proper process? Well, chemical abortion drugs are usually used um, the first trimester up to 10 weeks of pregnancy. Uh, there's, there's two drugs. The first one starves the baby of nutrients in the womb and induces the baby's death. The second drug uh, induces uh, labor. And it's not just a heavy period. It's not just a little bit of blood. It's um, the type of thing that most women and girls are utterly unprepared for uh, in terms of the amount of uh, pain, which can be excruciating. And then, of course, many women and girls are unprepared uh, to see the um, the fully formed uh, baby in some cases, uh, often already forming um, feet. At, and the problem with how these chemical abortion drugs have been approved is that there are serious risks. They're um, unsafe to women. Obviously, they always take a baby's life. But um, even compared to surgical abortion, the complication rate is much higher. In, in fact, as many as one in five women seek medical attention after taking chemical abortion drugs. And that can be for hemorrhaging, which is uncontrolled bleeding. Uh, it can be for uh, life-threatening infections like sepsis um, if they don't pass all of the baby's remains. And of course, because the FDA has no safeguards on it, this is mail order abortion. It's completely unsupervised. There's no abortionist there with you, uh, no one to go to if there's a problem. So what you have are just women and girls alone 
you know, picture a college girl alone in a bathroom, uh, bleeding in, in excruciating pain. And, and who helps in that situation? You go to your mo- local emergency room, mm-hmm. if, you know, if, if you're lucky, uh, you go to your OB. And that's who we represent, the emergency room doctors, the OBs who see these women and help them. Uh, one of our doctors um, sees girls who are just completely unprepared, freaked out, grieving just for the quote unquote normal use of these drugs. Another one of our doctors sees women who, um, if they don't seek medical attention, waited another few days, uh, really could have lost their lives because of the risk of infection from these dangerous drugs. They, they were never safe for anyone, and they should never have been approved in the first place. Julie, does the FDA see these risks that you've just described in, in terrible detail as just an acceptable risk of the drug, or they deny that these risks are real? Well, the, the FDA, uh, I think, hasn't wanted ever to look at the science and certainly didn't want to learn about it since the, uh, the initial approval. Uh, one of the problems in the Obama administration when it changed the safeguards is it told people, hey, you know, adverse events, problems with these drugs, I don't want to hear it. Unless somebody died, and our doctors are trying to make sure that no, no one uh, dies from taking these drugs, no women and girls, um, unless it dies, we don't want to hear about any of these complications or adverse reports. So they're deliberately not trying to follow the science. They're not trying to collect the data. And so um, even though the best studies out there that that our doctors have been putting together uh, shows that one in five women will seek medical attention after taking these drugs. And these are the most common form of abortion in America. More than half of abortions in America are used to these chemical abortion drugs. 20% is a ridiculously high rate of of needing needing medical treatment. In about 20 seconds, Julie, what are you hoping to accomplish out of this lawsuit? Well, the FDA has a responsibility to protect the health and safety of all Americans, including women and girls. It's time to follow the law, put politics aside, and protect them. And we're asking the court to order the FDA to withdraw these drugs entirely from the market. Julie Marie Bright, uh, Julie Marie Blake, excuse me, Alliance Defending Freedom, thanks so much for your time and your advocacy on this issue, as always. Thanks for being with us. Thank you.